Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So today, I'm gonna to be installing some drip irrigation in this bed and that bed, right there. Now, I do have drip irrigation set up in all of my other beds here, but I never was able to set it up into these. These are newer beds. Now it's time to add the drip to these beds as well. A couple months ago, I did a video on how I installed this, but I'll give you guys a quick update. We've got a couple different devices here. We've got one that is a filter. We've got this here that uh, will reduce the PSI. You don't want the water to be too much pressure on these hoses because it's just going to bust them right out. So you definitely need that. And then it's got this, which will connect to a hose down to one of these uh, tubes. And then I just got the line running all the way down and here I've got a T intersection and it goes up into here where then I can control and decide if I wanna turn this bed on or not. I can actually turn these off each individual bed so I'll know if I wanna water this, maybe I don't wanna water something else if they don't require as much water. Down the row, that sends off to a drip line. And you can see this a little better here with my garlic because I don't have plants all over it. And you can see each individual drip line and every single one has one of these. This whole line here has nothing to turn it off. It all travels, the water will travel up and down this line. So I've got these valves up higher. So that way I can tee off right here and send another line up to here, over to this bed, and then over to this bed. So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, what we're gonna need today for this project is gonna be half inch tubing, drip line. And this one, they come in a couple different kinds. And this one is every 12 inch, there's a drip. I can't remember the flow rate of each drip, but it seems to work perfectly for me. I'll link everything that I have here in the description section below. And I got all this from Drip Depot, as you can see here. We will also need two T intersections. We'll need two of these that can turn off each bed. We need two end caps here, and this will stop the flow coming out of the tube. And we will need four of these right angles, at least for my bed. And you might need to change some of this around and what you need depending on the project that you're doing, but you can get a good idea of what you need for each bed. These things hold up the drip line off the ground so they don't get all mucked up with dirt. And you can see right here, you can see those, and they just snap into place, hold the drip line, and you just push it in, and that keeps the drip line level, or at least semi-level, so you don't get drips all in one spot. It's not perfect, but it works pretty well. The other thing you're gonna want is these U-shaped stakes, so that way you can staple this drip line into the ground so you're not tripping on it and it's moving all around. And then to install the drip line into the half inch tubing, you need these. These are just barbed connectors that connect right into there. And at the end of the tubing, so you don't get water shooting out, you just need an end cap. Make sure you've got the right sizes for everything because Drip Depot sells a couple different sizes. Okay, this is the half inch. They sell a little bit smaller, I think, and they also sell some larger ones. Um, the same thing I think goes with the drip irrigation as well. Um, so you want to make sure everything is sized correctly to whatever tubing that you're gonna be using. And I almost forgot to mention you're gonna want one of these tools. When I first bought this system it came with something like that that's gonna poke a hole in the tubing to allow you to stick the barbs in but it didn't come with the cutter and I will be honest the thing that they had to cut that tubing was really difficult to use. I had a lot of pressure to be able to cut that hole. And that was a kit. I mean, you can get all these things individually and I highly recommend it. Those kits cost a little more than I think they're worth and there's things that you might not use. You can get all this pretty inexpensive and more tailored to what your needs are. Just kind of know exactly how you're gonna lay it out first before you order and always get a couple extra of these connectors than you think you're gonna need. So, but this tool, I will be honest, is very, very handy. I was trying to cut this tubing with a knife. And I did that with this whole thing and it's just not easy to be super accurate. And then that tool is gonna to make it a lot easier. So I think they sell a tool like this on Drip Depot, if you go, but I got this one on Amazon. I think it was like $11 and it was well worth the money. Um, I'm not sure what they sell them for on Drip Depot, but I'll link to whichever one is least expensive. Well, okay, let's get started here. Staples. So I'm gonna lift those up so I can access this. And we are going to place this down to see where we need to cut it. If I don't cut a little bit on each side, then this is gonna get all, it's not gonna be nice and straight. So, but you don't wanna overcut it or you're not gonna be able to connect. So I will cut first right in the center. 
okay? A little water is gonna come out and you wanna make sure, of course, that you have this off, obviously. So let's let that drain for a minute. As you can see, if I was to just put that on there, then this would be extra. So let's go ahead and cut a little off that side. We'll look at where it's gonna end up. We're gonna cut about the same amount off that side. Maybe a little less. We can always cut more, we can't put more on, so. Now, these are a little tough to get on, I'm gonna be honest. So you wanna make sure these are screwed all the way, because you can screw these on, as you can see. You don't wanna to try to put it on like that. Make sure these are all the way back. And then just force it in as best as you can. And then we're just gonna twist this on. And that's gonna tighten that on there. And we're gonna do the same thing here. And they are a tight fit, a little difficult to do, but that's a good thing. Now, as you can see, that's all bowed out now. And I need to cut a little more off. So I need a little more. Like I said, you can always cut more, but you can't put more on. So let's cut a little bit more and see how that looks. That'll be fine. I don't want to go too much here. And now we can staple this back into the ground really tough to get in so one trick they say is you can actually soak it in some warm water or lay it out in the sun except for today is a cold rainy day so super cloudy there's no sun so just gonna use some extra force all right so next we're just gonna pull this tight and I've got this brick here that's just gonna hold it down make it a little easier I've got these stakes now I think the kits come with like a, not a full U. They've got a little half thing here. The U is a little better, I think. So let's see if I can get these in. I do have really, really hard soil. And I like doing this because that's gonna ensure that it's nice and straight before I start moving with anything else. This is gonna make it a little easier. And I think actually I'm gonna come, come up to where it comes up this side and then down and we'll send the drips that way so right there looks good let's check that with the other bed it looks like that's lined up perfectly as well so right there and now let's get some more tubing for right there and i'm going to put this staple in just to hold it because oh i hit a rock that's going to hold it that's so I can bring this over and measure where I want to cut it for this intersection here. And it looks like it's going to be right there. Do a little more than I think I need. All right, so that's a little loose, but we can fudge that by getting this one over just a little bit, and that'll work. So this piece got bent, so I'm just going to cut that off. I'm not wasting a lot here, and I don't want that to make this fragile but let's go ahead and connect this so that way we can put it in the other bed so now i can line this up here and get that right there that'll hold it let's add one more staple here and we'll pull that pretty tight now i can pull on this one here and that's not all going to move and it'll hold everything tight so i can measure this out perfectly so you're going to want to grab another end piece Put it where you want it. We're gonna bring over the tubing and we're gonna rough cut it. That's a little too long right there. So we want it like maybe right there. We'll cut it right there. Might still be a little too long, but we can always adjust. You can take more off, can't put more on. That's perfect. I'm stretching it tight, it's right up against there. I'm gonna start working on building the next part going up into this bed and over. For that whole part, we're gonna need one of these and one of these. And a couple little sections of this. So if you've already cut off a couple small sections like I did here, you can use these. So I'll show you what we're doing here. Get this section pushed in. You know, and the nice thing about these connectors is it's not only a barb system when you're pushing it in, but then this tightens on top of it and this is just not gonna come loose at all next let's look and see how high we want this it needs to be cut a little bit i'm going to say right at the bend anyway it's perfect so you want to make sure when doing this that this is 
this part is facing outward. And in this case, it's gonna be lined up with that. Otherwise, it's gonna be hard to twist this if it's up against there. This cut section that I'm gonna end up using to go across here, but I know that this is already too long. So I'm gonna cut a section off and you want this long enough that it's gonna reach up above and you can always cut it down to fit. I've still got like at least this much to work with to make it fit there. So depending on how tall your raised bed is, that is definitely gonna reach up above. Actually, it's gonna be way more than I need. So let's cut another section like that. Now that I know that that's where it's gonna go, I'll put the stake in now. That is too long of a piece, I'm positive. As you can see, that's gonna be too high. So need to cut off a little bit of length, not a lot. So this side is done. Now it's time to do this exact same thing over here. All right. So this one was pre-cut. I had it from another bed. This almost makes you wanna try the boiling water trick, but it is really tough to get on. But that's good, that makes it nice and tight. We're gonna measure this out to the end. And I've got some seedlings right up against the edge here. So we're gonna have to pull those. All right, I'm gonna grab a couple of these stakes to, to ensure that this stays where I want it. Now we need an end cap. And these, the, the tops can come off, so you can allow water to come out if you need to purge the system. Or you screw them on and keeps the water in the tube. I do like these sticking out, not in the bed. So I like them kind of like right there. That's just personal preference. That's what I've been doing. And I'm just going to stick with it. Okay, there we go. So we're gonna measure this and cut it. And just like last time, I want it sticking out just slightly. I might need to pull these two and I can use them anyway. So these are daikon radish. Oh, what a beautiful daikon radish. That one's getting good size. So I've got another probably week or two until I pull the rest of these up before they're all ready. But that one looks real good. I, it should get a little fatter down here, but they're big. They're like big giant carrots, but they're sweet. They're good. I really like them. Love them in stews. I'm gonna put that over there. Some turnips here that I'm gonna get rid of so that way I can get the tubing in. Well, starting to bulb up a little bit, but those still got another about month until I wanna actually pick these ones. So I'm gonna get these two out of the way. So I'm gonna feed those to the chickens. Might be why they're yelling, because they see me messing with this bed. They're probably asking for the, for the leaves. Here you go, guys. Enjoy. Now I'm gonna turn off all the other beds. And I wanna see if there's any leakage. I'm hearing it come through here. I don't think so. So, now that we know that there's no, no parts leaking, let's pull off an end cap. And we're gonna, well, should've probably turned it off before I did that, got soaked, that was dumb. So we're gonna purge the system here. Let that run for 30 seconds to a minute or so. And that's just in case there's any dirt in the line. You don't want that, that'll plug up the drip lines. Let's turn that off. And that's, by the way, how simple it is to water. You just come and turn that on. And that's also another reason why I like putting the end cap at the very end, because every once in a while you want to purge the system and you don't want to just fill up your garden bed. So now we're putting the end caps on. So next we're going to need the puncher because we're going to make some holes. You need the hole puncher. And you're also going to need these barbed uh, connectors. I'm going to put one right here, right next to my radish here. The radish will end up getting pulled pretty soon, way before the carrots get to any size. And so if I have a line going straight here, um, this is at about six inches. So it should be able to water the end ones here just fine with one coming here. Also, take note when doing it, this is the puncher. If you punch, if you turn it around and 
you've got it going this way, you're going to punch a hole this side. You want it on this side since you're going that direction. There we go. I heard a click. You can see the water drip out. So there's one. I'm going to then punch all my holes. I am, let's see. So I've got, I'm going to put another one right here next to these radish. And real simple, all we're going to do is just put in these barbed connectors. Now that all the barbs are in, let's go ahead and connect the drip line. Drip line has these little drippers, and this one is cut right in the center of a dripper. This one you can see here. Because the drippers are where the, the water drips from, I like to start the drip real close to a drip line. So that way, when it comes through, I can get three drip lines all the way down. All right, that's in there nice and good. And as you can see, I've got one, two, three drips, and that's perfect. Here, you can actually have it cut right up to the edge, which I'm gonna do. There's one drip line. All right, now I've got every single one of these drip lines connected. They're curly cue because that's they wanna hold their shape. So we're just gonna cap the ends of each one of these. Okay, so since these are all curly Q, we're gonna need something to stake these down. And that's where these come in. I'm gonna push this back because that's where I want it. And that should straighten out a little better over time once the sun hits it. And I'm going to continue doing that through all of these and straighten these all out. So this bed is all done. The drip is up. I'm going to test it in a little bit once I set up the drip line to this bed. The whole thing is installed. So let's go ahead and test it. Super simple. I'm just going to flip that on. Let's see how this works. Yep, and we got some drip. We want to bring those up so they drip and they don't get clogged. But every single one of them is dripping. And I always like to check the ones further out. All right, not bad. I think all of it looks really good. Let's check over here. But let's turn on something else. This bed looks a little dry. Might as well water it and see if that changes anything. Adding some pressure release. You can see how these are dripping. Now this is a good example. You can see we've got water spot, water spot, water spot. And over time that's gonna swell out. Every single one of these will get water. Well, there we go, we're all done. Install the drip irrigation on this bed and this bed just connected to our other irrigation. And I think there's enough pressure to be able to install it in other lines. In fact, I might be at one point connecting T intersection here and going all the way over to my trees, which are right there. So I got two peach trees there, and it would be nice to get drip irrigation to those so I don't have to walk over with a watering can or drag the hose over there. So that would be nice and make it a little easier and healthier for the plants. But there we go, we are done. We've got the drip irrigation installed. Every single one of our beds has a separate valve that we can turn it off and on. That's all I was trying to do today. So I'm happy it, it got done with not too many hiccups. And it's really not that difficult, guys. So if you're interested in doing this, I will link in the description section below all the products that I used. I got everything off a of drip depot, except for the cutter and the hole punch. I highly recommend getting one of those. I think they sell them at Drip Depot as well, but they also sell them on Amazon. But I really like this type of connector and it's solid and the tubing seems like it's gonna last a while. I mean, it handled all of our really hot summer. We're in Texas. I mean, we get to 105, 100 and even 10 degrees a couple days in the summer and the sun beating on it. A lot of tubing will go out, but this has withstood and it's been great. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. I make a video almost every single day. Also, if you could hit the like button, that would really help me out in the channel and hit that bell notification for future video updates. And I will see you on the next video. Now you guys try to escape the daily grind.